Choosing the perfect smartphone right now can feel like navigating a maze without a map. And if you're on the market for the best mid-range smartphone right now, you might have considered these three devices, the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus 5G, the Samsung Galaxy A55, and the Techno Camon 30 Pro. With the Redmi priced at 547,800 Naira or $380, the Galaxy at 631,000 Naira or $430, and Techno offering an enticing package of 512 gigs storage, which is double the storage on others here, and 12 gigs of RAM, others have 8 gigs of RAM, for a mere 538,000 Naira or $370, the stakes are high and the decisions even harder. The main question is, does opting for the Techno's wallet-friendly price tag come with hidden compromises? Or is the pricier Samsung model here with the flagship-like allure truly worth the extra investment? I'm gonna help you make that tough decision and with clarity and insight. And so without taking much of your time, yo guys, let's get started. Kicking off with the unboxing, each box tells a story. Redmi and Techno pack a lot of goodies in their boxes, aside the smartphone, the cable, the user guide you get from all the smartphones. The Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus 5G packs a 120 watts charger in the box, and this is for sure a game changer. But Techno is not far behind with the respectable 70 watt charger in the box, and they give a pair of wireless earbuds too. I will say Samsung played it cool, I mean, that's not so cool, having support for just 25 watt charging but with no charger in the box and that's for more money. Who does that? The other two take the lead with Techno being at the forefront in terms of accessories and unboxing. So for design and build quality, there's a lot to unpack here. By merely looking at these smartphones, Techno seems to be disadvantaged and hear me out. It has a plastic back or what feels like one. I think they call it silicone polymer. These other two devices have glass backs and to their fronts you'd find Gorilla Glass Victus Plus and the regular one on them. Something that isn't specified on Techno. There is also IP67 on the A55 and IP68 on the Redmi here, yet another specification for protection not found on the Techno this common device from Techno. Even a quick look at these devices, you can tell that while the Samsung looks really premium, like top level flagship premium build look, same as the Note from Redmi, Techno feels like a cheap device even when you hold it. Enough with the build qualities, how do they hold up when you hold those devices in hand? The Redmi Note feels like the best in hand, really comfortable to hold. Next would be the Techno device, and Samsung seems to stay somewhere in between. The Samsung Galaxy A55 seems to be my least favorite in terms of holding it in hand. And that's even though the Techno seems to be the biggest device here. If you want a flagship-like kind of device, the Samsung would be here for you. It looks like the S series lineup. Next would be the Redmi before you talk about the Techno in terms of the build quality. Now let's talk speakers. When you compare the audio from the smartphones, it's just clear that the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus 5G has the best sounding audio. That is closely followed by the Galaxy A55 and then the Techno Camon 30 Pro, coming in with a quite good audio quality, although not the best in this case. For the mic test, you get to hear what those devices sound like. This is an audio mic test on the smartphone. What do you guys think about the audio quality? Let me know in the comments. This is an audio mic test on the smartphone. What do you guys think about the audio quality? Let me know in the comments. This is an audio mic test on the smartphone. What do you guys think about the audio quality? Let me know in the comments. When it comes to displays, there are a couple things to consider. The display tech, the size, and the refresh rate on these devices, at least they're the major things you would want to consider about displays when getting a smartphone. First off, all those panels are AMOLED panels or displays, so you get really good blacks and a display that for sure would save on your battery. Starting with the largest here, which is the Techno at 6.78 inch, which is next to the Redmi at 6.67 inch, and then the Galaxy A55 at 6.6 inch in size. All of the smartphones are within one inch of each other. The display with the most specification would be the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus 5G. You get Dolby Vision and HDR10 Plus specification or certification. And the Samsung here also has HDR10 Plus specification, none of which are found on the Techno. Now on paper, the Redmi should be the best here. Well, when I tested out these devices and played back HDR content on the Redmi and the Samsung, Okay, I prefer the Redmi, but at some point, you'd notice that the content being played back on the Redmi begins to stutter slightly, like frame drops, before it goes back to normal. Not the audio, just the pictures. It happened occasionally, and I wish I could show you guys this, but for copyright issues, I can't. Samsung had the smoother playback in that regard, and I tested both of these devices as 1440p HDR content. For the colors, I was torn between the Redmi and the Samsung. Sometimes I preferred the Redmi, but most times I went with Samsung. 
techno followed behind, but it was really close. But whenever I pulled up my MacBook alongside these devices, the techno matched it closer than any of these devices. I was pleasantly surprised. Refresh rate is the highest on techno at 144Hz, which is buttery smooth and the device takes the lead here. The other devices max out at 120Hz refresh rate. Now, when it comes to using these smartphones outdoors, then the brightest is the Redmi at 1800 nits at maximum or peak brightness. The Galaxy has 1000 nits, and I don't know the number for Techno's display here, but it's high enough as I couldn't tell the difference between the brightness on the Techno and the Galaxy A55. It just might be higher or around the same number. So for displays, all have great color rendition, but Techno wins in terms of the refresh rate and size. Redmi has the best specification on paper and also the brightest, and Samsung seems to be the most balanced and good enough display. These devices are powered by different chipsets. The Dimensity 8200 Ultimate powers the Techno Camon 30 and the Exynos 1480 on the Galaxy A55 while you get the Dimensity 7200 Ultra on the Redmi. Now, the Techno is the performance beast and can easily handle anything you throw at it, from really GPU-intensive games down to making phone calls. This is the best you should consider next to the Redmi, which performs quite well and better than the Galaxy. These devices can go up to 12 gigs of RAM as far as the memory configurations. I have 8 gigs for my Redmi, 8 gigs for my A55, and 12 gigs of RAM on my Canon 30 Pro. As far as the storage, you get 512 gigs, I think as the only storage option for the Canon 30 Pro. The Redmi can go up to 512 gigs with just dual SIM trays and no memory expansion slots, while the Samsung Galaxy A55 has a dual hybrid SIM slot, meaning one SIM and a memory expansion slot or two SIMs without the ability to expand your memory. You can only get an option of 256 gigs in terms of the internal storage. Gaming experience was best on the Techno, obviously. I even easily played the new Warzone Call of Duty on this smartphone and it was quite playable. The Galaxy struggled a whole lot more to keep up with such processing demands. Now, for those of you who are interested in seeing the benchmark scores, here are the Geekbench and 2 and 3D Max scores to give you an idea of what the performance on this smartphone feels like. By the way, if you're loving this video so far, a sub would make my day. Thank you. For the cameras, there are three rare cameras on the three of them. For the main cameras, you get a 50 megapixel for Samsung and the Techno, while the Redmi has a 200 megapixel shooter. The ultra wide are 50 megapixels for Techno, 12 megapixels for Samsung, and 8 megapixels for the Redmi. The third cameras are macro lenses for Samsung and Redmi, which are 5 and 2 megapixels respectively, while Techno has a 2 megapixel depth sensor. For these rare photos, I could tell they were all good. In fact, you'd most likely get confused trying to pick which had the better camera. One thing that became apparent for me was how closely the Techno's camera and the Galaxy cameras did match up although you might occasionally notice the slightly different white balance amongst both of them. But other than that, you can't tell the Galaxy A55 and the Techno Camo 30 Pro's photos apart. I also did notice that Techno and Samsung did a whole lot better at exposure handling for the photos here. At this other close tree photo, you can see the better exposure thing going on with the Galaxy and the Camon, giving you the slightly better photos, which are identical yet again, while Redmi has the leaves under the shadow underexposed. This really close up photo looks identical on all, although you can see that from the tarmac, the A55 matches the Camon, but I did notice more details with the Redmi than the other two. Maybe something to do with the higher pixel count on the center. For the ultra wide shots, this is where you'd notice the Redmi and the Techno align in terms of the colors. The Galaxy does a little more punch with the reds and the greens, maybe it's more vibrant here. So for the rare camera photos, I'd go with the Techno or Samsung. But for the rare camera details, maybe zoomed photos and details in the images, the Redmi is the device to pick. For the front facing cameras, you get a 32 megapixel, 60 megapixel, and 50 megapixel for Samsung, Redmi, and Techno, respectively. I noticed that the Galaxy A55 and the Camon 30 Pro's front facing cameras were almost identical yet again. Skin tones, the hair colors, everything matched. The Redmi took a slightly different route with the better blacks, in my opinion, or dare I say, better white balance, and it was kind of my preferred photo here. When it comes to low light photos, the Galaxy A55 seems to do the most, and in fact, is the best in terms of low light. Next would be the Redmi and then the Camon comes in last. For the video side of things, you can record at up to 4K on all of these front and back cameras for these devices. From the videos, Samsung seems to be the best at exposing the subject. I prefer the balance of the color, richer in the reds actually. Techno does a really similar image to the Samsung, but for two major differences. It is slightly underexposed until you manually expose for the subject, and also it is on the green side of the color thin scale. A little of what Samsung has, but other than that, these are really close and identical. 
Redmi on the other hand gives me the least details in the video and it tends to give the least saturation for the videos. I'll place it at the bottom with Samsung at the first and Techno at a very close second place. For the front facing video, I did notice that I somehow preferred the overall representation from Redmi. There was a nice balance of the colors, the blacks were as perfect as the Samsung's and the reds were as good as the Techno's. While Samsung had a little oversaturated skin tone, even making my face look a little too green, but the saturation brought back life to my face though, they didn't express the reds thoroughly. For instance, my lips are more accurate as seen on Techno and Redmi. Techno had the least details on the front facing camera video for me, colors weren't the best and the blacks didn't give exactly what it should have given. The skin tone also looked a little bit too plastic even though I turned off the enhancement AI feature here. So for me on the front facing camera videos, it's the Redmi for the first position while Samsung and Techno would take on the second position because the color seemed better for Techno and the blacks seemed better on Samsung. It's quite close for both of these devices. So at this point, I don't think battery is a problem for mid-range devices in this category as they do a great job at lasting you all through the day on an average use. By the way, all of these devices are 5000mAh battery smartphones. The Samsung seems to be well optimized and give me more screen time next to the Redmi and then Techno. I suspect the Techno's lower screen time had something to do with turning on the refresh rate up to 144Hz. Now where things get interesting is in the charge speed. You get a 120 watts charger that comes in the box with the Redmi device here which takes it from 0 to 100 in 25 minutes. For Techno it's about 50 minutes with a 70 watt charger found within the box. Samsung takes a different route even though they have support for 25 watt charging, you do not get a charger from within the box. That's crazy. I'd give the most points to Redmi and then Techno's Camon 30 Pro. Obviously because of the chargers and then the last point goes to Samsung. These have really good battery life so far. At the end of the day, these points mean nothing really because these devices, in my opinion, would cater to different needs and different people. Let me summarize the three persons who need these devices, after which I'll share with you one important point that would help you make the right decision. But first off, the three persons. If you want the best bang for your buck, like the best value for money now, given the performance, a really good photo camera, with lots of accessories, a fast charger and a free pair of earbuds within the box, you definitely do not want to miss the Techno Camon 30 Pro. The only downside might be two years of software updates into the future and it doesn't have that premium build. Now if you're looking for the best display, the best speakers and arguably the best build quality and protection, maybe three years of software updates, then the Redmi Note 13 Pro Plus 5G for a little more money than the Techno, say about $10 more is the device to pick. The problem here would be it's a curved display and not a lot of people like those kind of displays. Then the camera for this smartphone, especially for the rare cameras, are not really the best here. But if you're looking for a balance, good display, and even more software updates into the future, five years actually, a smartphone that looks just like the flagship devices right now and strikes the balance for a lot of things, then you can go with the Samsung Galaxy A55. The downside here is it's the worst performer among the bunch and the most expensive without accessories within the box. Your choice now depends on what you value most. Balance and longevity, speed and value for money, then hardware durability and great display. So the decision making part I was going to share with you guys. I really do think you should pick between the Techno and the Samsung devices here. The Redmi doesn't really have the strong reason why I should pick it up here. Personally, it's either I want the best performer at the cheaper cost or something that can last more into the future, I mean longevity and also has this flagship design and balance. Tell me what you think in the comment section below and also hit that like button as that helps us a bunch. Also do check out my reviews on these devices on this channel and I'll catch you guys in the next one. Kawira Day.